question of, uh, so this is Molly Barnes, James Knowles, reporting for Roger Smith News. Um, I wonder, um, Molly, you are uh, such a passionate and, uh, you know, I guess people, I'd be interested to know uh, where this thing about art uh, generated from. You made the connection between your, your father as a bridge and, and uh, a builder and engineer and uh, in San Francisco, but you took a turn, a, a passionate turn towards uh, the nature of American art, really, and American art as it happened, as it's been happening all along, and you, as, and you wanted to be a player in it, and you're also a, an enthusiast, and um, I think, you know, you're willing to battle on the subjects. You're also a, a, an excellent interviewer on radio, television. You're, you've uh, been a gallerist for years, so, um, and probably more than that, you've been an enthusiast in a, <clears throat> you know, in a way, art fun functions only because of people who are willing to uh, engage in chat and t talk it up and, and believe in it and believe in the people that are making it. So you can talk to me a little bit now that I've said what I had to say. When I was a kid, I grew up in Hollywood. My father was a Rhodes Scholar from a small town in Texas. He worked at uh, Paramount Pictures. And it was so exciting to go there. My mother, who was a society maven, did not want me working as an actress. At that time, you know, the, the hotels would say, no, no dogs or actors welcome here. It was a real stigma about actors. So I was looking around for something where I could get out my creative juices. And I saw that Hal Wallace, who was my father's boss, collected art. And it really turned me on, not only the idea that he was collecting Impressionist art, but the fact that it took him into a, a group of like-minded people. Suddenly he was on the board of the LA County Museum and he was uh, an authority. And I was always a collector, so I thought, I, I would love to paint, but I don't like to be alone that much. And I thought, what would be a good place for a woman? And I really thought being an art dealer would do it. My first husband was an executive at CBS here in New York. We bought a house in East Hampton when I was very young. And uh, all of the artists were living around us. De Kooning was there, Joan Mitchell, Rhea Pell, Jasper Johns, uh, John Little. They were all there, and I thought, this is a great way for a woman to become involved in a creative act and also be with people, which is really what I love. So I became an art dealer. I started working for dealers. I worked for three or four, then five or six. And then eventually, when uh, the man I was working for went bankrupt, uh, he was Frank Gehry's brother-in-law. I thought, it's time for me to open my own space, which I did in 1967. I found I, I was short on a lot of ideas, but one thing I was very good at was picking artists who would make it. And some of my choices were uh, substantiated. Um, John Baldessari, who's one of the highest, uh, most well thought of uh, artists living today, he just had a show at the uh, Met. And uh, he was one of the people I showed first. Uh, Mark Kostabi, who's made it uh, in a way uh, about you, I'm interested in you. Oh, okay. uh, all the artists I know. Uh, you're, you're. She's a, she's an, a real promoter of uh, these great guys and all that. But I think it's interesting to know something, and to have you reflect on your. What's the generation how, generating force that comes from, you know? I like that. Um, I, I was very close to William de Kooning, and I like the fact that he spoke to people at every every level, at their level, but he also took them on a trip, not just with the paintings, but with the idea of his, his, his ideas. Um, I looked around a room at a party once when I was very young, and I thought, who's the most powerful man in this room? And it was Bill de Kooning. He was very small, but he had a great deal of uh, charisma. And uh, what intrigued me was the spiritual aspects that it touched. Sometimes when I look at a painting, I feel like I'm really close to God. And uh, particularly going to the de Kooning show, first at the Whitney and then the retrospective this year at the, at the Museum of Modern Art, I felt you can really tell about people by what they're attracted to. And also, it's a pipeline to God. Artists only get better as they get older, where more pe most people sort of drop off and and lose interest in life, artists reflect and, 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 in my opinion, get better. Some of the artists that I've, well, you say don't talk about the artists, so. I'm, I'm interested in the artists, but I'm also very interested in the, gener the generation generating 
engine that you how do you reflect on your generating en energy like okay so you were born with a with the gift of a fusion you're you're constantly your mind never settles it's yeah. it's constantly moving you're bi coastal by a phys physical place and um but you're also um uh you know long term interested in what these guys do and and how they do it you also make friends with them so but talk to me a little bit more i just don't know where where it, it goes i'm trying to you know peel back the layer there or the the onion a little bit. When you meet an artist, awfully, uh, often they're, they're uh, nonverbal. Um, in, in New York, you see artists have a great deal of knowledge and they spend a great deal of time talking to other artists. In other parts of the country, artists are very isolated and it's hard for them to talk or they'll talk about something that's very banal rather than getting into their, their ideas and philosophies. But when you can really click into what an artist is about, it's just a treasure trove of excitement, of, of what's going on, of their obsession with creating something that's never been seen before or reflecting something that has been seen, but seeing it in a new way, calling our attention to God's gifts. The, um, you're also a storyteller, or you, 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 you're actually fascinated by people, and you... Um, you have a uh, pleasure in the in the uh, complexity of people and their uh, and their interrelationships with things. Can you reflect on that? Well, Jim, you were the first person I ever met that really reflected back to me my own family because you came from a very conservative family. Your father was on the membership committee of the uh, Greenwich Country Club, and that's what my family was. And yet, they were all seekers. My, uh, my great uncle was the governor of California, the mayor of San Francisco. My uncle was the head of uh, uh, the board of trustees for the University of California. I had another uncle who died at 100 a couple of months ago who still wrote poetry right before he died. He got the book published and then, you know, self-published and then died. And um, so there was always this, this interest in, um, in what was correct, politically correct, but there was also an enormous interest in how can we make a difference? How can we change things? They always say that the first generation makes the money, the second generation spends it, and the third generation gets into good works. And I don't know if I have that quite correctly, but I think that's what, what I've tried to do, is uh, carry on the family line. I buy art or it's given to me, and I've had several shows, one here at your hotel, of art that I collect. And you always insisted that I show self-portraits. When you're an art dealer and you're fairly uh, attractive and have blonde hair, everybody paints you, you know, because they know they'll either get a show or they'll get a mention somewhere. So you get a lot of attention. Um, I think that... <laughs> That's, that, there you go, folks. You got the message. Now, okay. if you want to approach the, the, the cute blondes, just paint them. Always ask them. <laughs> and, That's exactly Right. And don't, not just their faces. <laughs> I noticed with your paintings, I'm sitting in a room and looking out on Lexington Avenue, there are six or eight uh, portraits done in bronze of, of, of thinkers and their heads. And it's uh, amazing to see these done because you come from such a conservative family and yet your uh, interest is in people who are changing people's minds in this century. And then I look at your paintings, and they're all very, very strong uh, horizontal uh, verticals, and yet they all take you back in space. They're all connected with uh, going back through doorways. And most of the art that we see today is very flat. You know, the abstract expressionist said flat, flat, flat. Clement Greenberg said flat, flat, flat. And you, you take us back in space, and I don't know if that's because you're yearning to get back into the country. And so all of these are doorways, or maybe you're thinking about death, so everything is taking you into another area. But as I sit here, I look, and everything is dealing with space. That was one of the, the things that turned me on in the early days, was uh, uh, that everything was flat with the artists that I liked. You know, they, they, they uh, Sam Francis, all of the... Uh, are you telling me that you think that, that uh, Jackson Pollock's paintings were flat? Or that the Kooning's paintings were flat. I yeah. don't. I don't believe it. Yeah, they were all either. Well, I mean, they were physically flat, but the the energy, the depth, the the uh, spatial dimensions that they all were dealing with. They were. I mean, I suppose you could say that Rothko was flat. 
I think but, he, but the dynamism of the colors and all that makes it hardly flat. What Rothko did and what, what de Kooning did at one period after he got over the, you know, the realist paintings was uh, start putting cool colors in front of warm colors so the colors are pushed out into the room, painting big so that everything moves out into the room. Uh, when you look at Sam Francis's work, you see he used the canvas as a vehicle for entertaining in front of it. I don't mean cocktail parties, I mean the idea of people relating and everything was pushing out into the room. What I see in each of these paintings of yours is that we're pushing back. You've got all the vibrant colors, you've used all the techniques you know about, about how colors respond when they're placed next to each other. But 